Well, before we discuss Jonathan's contraption that he has called um, a national comfort, we must first of all recall the type of conference that civil society and most progressives have been clamoring for. Over the years, the argument has been that the constitution that, is, that has been imposed upon us by the military, it's not a document that is touched on us. It's not a document that is emanating from the people by the people. And so the clamor has always been that we need a conference of sorts that will be sovereign to the extent that once its decisions or questions are subject to a referendum, the outcome of that referendum will be binding on all everybody, including even the government of the day. Now, having said that, look at what Jonathan has managed you know, to put together. First of all, it is a conference that has no legal backing to the extent that it cannot or its decisions cannot replace the provisions of the Constitution. So, whatever decisions they take after all the jamboree, let us be clear as constitutional lawyers that it cannot replace the provisions of the Constitution. Having said that, we have not been told that the decisions will be automatically even binding on the National Assembly to pass as part of its constitutional review process. So what we have seen in the past is what we are likely to see again, where the decisions of the, the, the conference will be subject to another committee again to look at it and then remove and add and subtract as the case may be. It is, it is a conference in name, a national conference in name, but it, is not, it cannot be sovereign at the end of the day because there are constitutional frameworks for now that will, de that will deprive that the outcome of that conference to be binding on anybody. Therefore, if government is serious about convoking a sovereign national conference that will be sovereign in its final decisions, especially when those decisions are subject to a referendum, what we should have ideally is an amendment to Section 9 of the Constitution. Section 9 that talks about the ways by which the Constitution can be amended. And the, the, the Section 9 simply says that, oh, for, for you to amend the provisions of the Constitution, a bill to that effect must be approved by the National Assembly and, of course, by two-thirds of all the states again, of the Federation and all that. But there should also be another provision that another way to amend the Constitution, apart from passing it through all the houses of assemblies of the states, is that there should be a proviso to Section 9 or an addition to Section 9 saying that if a sovereign national conference is convoked and the decision of the sovereign national conference or the questions it sets, it can be made to be binding automatically on everybody in Nigeria or the decision of the, the referendum automatically will be part of the constitution, then we know that we are facing a, a real sovereign, we are looking at a real sovereign national conference where once the referendum decides, it becomes binding on everybody. So what we ideally need before we go to a sovereign national conference in this country is an amendment to section 9. Until section 9 is amended, to, to, to the effect that a sovereign national conference and its decisions or questions taken to a referendum will be binding on everybody and will automatically alter provisions of the constitution 
Until that is done, anything we're engaging will be an exercise in futility. Anything we, we engage in now will be completely diversionary. It is just engaging in what uh, my good friend Igodo Migodo, Patrick Obama calls big stouting and pepper soup. That's what they want to do in Abuja. They want to be big stouting and pepper soup. So in a nutshell, it's like you are simply saying that sovereign national conference must fundamentally affect our constitution. Fundamentally affect our constitution and its decision must not be subject again to a review by any of those persons in government. But well, that, that, of course, they know will be political suicide. But then, but that's what we need. We need to go back to the people. Now, before President Bullock Jonathan came up with this proposed national conference, you have also been talking about sovereign national conference, but it's not very clear whether you are also particular about amendment of section 9 in the ones you have been clamoring for. Was it the same or is it now because no, President all, all, Jonathan is now the person calling the national conference, is that the reason why you now feel section 9 first has to be amended? Before? Oh yes, oh yes. Whether it is, whether it is um, the president that convokes it, whether it is the National Assembly, whoever is given the power to convoke the sovereign national conference is irrelevant. What is relevant is what is the legal effect of its decisions? That's, the, what is, that's what is relevant in the whole of this question. What happens to the decisions of such a conference? Will it be subject again? Now, <laughs> Jonathan has said, oh, we have no-go areas. What's the meaning of that? And I don't understand why Nigerians are easily fooled. What's the meaning of we have no-go areas? Okay, you have no-go areas. And so what, at the end of the day, you go there and shout about revenue derivation and all that, at the end of the day, it has no legal backing. You can talk about what you like, that's what it's telling you, but at the end of the day, what will be the legal effect of those things you have talked about? Let's look at something very clearly here. If Mr. Jonathan or President Jonathan does all these things you call the necessaries before we can talk about national conference or sovereign national conference, and it still comes back to call the national conference, would you still accept? Because it seems as if most of you are not really uh, against the national conference, but the source, the person it is coming Shadu, from. I will not go into a game without knowing the rules. I will not go into a contest without knowing clearly what are the parameters upon which I will play this contest, I will engage in this contest. You look at my judgment on service chiefs. The appointment of service chiefs that have been declared null and void. What are they still doing there? What are they still doing there? I only waited for some time to pass to write back to the president or to go back to court. The court has said that the appointment of all the service chiefs are null and void without approval by the National Assembly. So tell me what are they still doing in office? All decisions they have taken since July when I got that judgment, everything done by the service chiefs have been null and void. So whether they put anybody in court martial, they court martial anybody, they dismiss anybody, any document they sign, any military man should challenge any of such documents. Because anywhere they append their signature to it, their chief of staff, never staff, chief of army staff, chief of any staff at all, any such document is null and void. Because no matter how powerful you are, you cannot be greater than the law. The law has said your appointment is null and void, and what you are doing in office now is illegal. And the government has not obeyed it. And you think they want to implement the plain decisions of a conference but that will go against it? Let's look at the history of most of your legal battles because you are now speaking with emotion regarding the one concerning legal, uh, uh, the, the service chiefs. Yes, I'm talking as, law. Has, has there been any one that you fought in court and you succeeded and it is duly implemented that you can, okay, say, let's appraise this one? No. None. That's what I'm saying. I'm just cited one example to you. So what do you think is the solution? I have, I have also, I've, for the past four years, I've been telling them that they are, they are Controller General of Customs, Aladi Diko, is a crook. He's sitting as a Controller of Customs with forged certificates. And I've been shouting. And all the only thing you, you can use to keep me quiet is to, is to just show your certificates. And he has refused to do so. And I have written more than 10 letters to Jonathan. And he's keeping the man there. 
and they want to re, they want to even re, you know re, reaffirm his appointment or reconfirm his appointment for another four years. I mean, this is I'm not I'm not talking from emotions. I'm talking from a clear head that this is a government that has no regard for the rule of law. Okay, let's go back to the uh, national conference as proposed by President Gilok Dinatana or as proposed by the presidency. Mm. Apart from the fact that you said that we don't need that kind of conference because of those things that are not in place before we can call a conference, how about those that the president proposed to be in the conference, like uh, Okunomu and the rest of them? Well, I only, I only, I only, I only you know, sympathize with them. You know, the time that they should spend laughing with their children, spending holidays with their children, they want to waste just that time now. I advise they should go back and spend quality time with their families. Do you think they, they are, are sending them on the white goose chase? But this, they are not this, going to this, waste their time. They are wasting their time. They should go home and spend that quality time with their family. Because they are just sending them on a the wild goose chase. But money is going to be earmarked for this conference. Oh, that's so that's know, that is not a waste of time. Oh, that's the most important thing. The most important thing is that they are going to have fat pays and sitting allowances. So it's not a waste of time after all. Congratulations <laughs> for them. Nigerians should <laughs> rise <laughs> up for once and clearly tell the president, we are no fools. Let us exactly know how you intend to implement the decisions of this conference. Do not tell us to start talking and at the end of the day you tell us what you will do when we finish talking. Tell us how are those decisions going to form part of our constitution because a decision coming out of a sovereign national conference or a referendum must be part of a constitution. How? When in fact there is no provision to accommodate that, the, 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 the outcome of such a referendum in the constitution. Go and amend section 9 and tell us that the decisions of a referendum that's an outcome of a sovereign national conference will be binding on everybody and they will be automatically amend the provisions of the constitution. Go and tell us that. So finally, you are aware that President Jonathan also set up a constitution reform committee and uh, perhaps most of the things you're agitating for have already been taken care of in that committee. And uh, so if we look at let me tell the national you, conference constitution reform, don't you think the both are going to let me, let, 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 me, let me tell you why these things are, are jamboree at times. And I feel that they are all concocted and you know, contrived to fulfill certain ends. Look at genuine suggestions I sent to them as to how to speed up corruption trials. And I'm sure you saw that. In the heat of the amendment, I sent a memo to them Simply outlaw stay of proceedings in criminal trials in your constitutional amendment so that in one year we can send all these people to jail. Cases mm. have been in court for one for four years. Cases have been in court for five years because of stay of proceedings. And I remember you also said that some of the provisions in EFCC Act should be taken from the and put in the constitution so that it becomes supreme. So outlaw stay of proceedings in criminal trials. It's a simple suggestion. Everybody kept quiet. Why? Why are they keeping quiet about it? But I'm sure that my memo to them has been, has been torn to pieces and put in the trash can. 